Hey guys, it is week two of our series, Free People, where we're talking about the relationship between freedom and rules. Now, maybe this sounds strange, but when I think about following the rules, I think about zombies. You know, remember when zombies were everywhere? I don't mean, you know, literally everywhere. Obviously, I mean in movies and on television. You know, The Walking Dead, in comic books, and walking around your neighborhood on Halloween. Now, I don't know how you feel about zombie movies, but personally, I think they're terrifying. And not just because of the zombies, but mainly because of the way that people immediately seem to like turn on each other as soon as the zombies show up. You know, civilization collapses, rules and laws disappear, and suddenly it's uh, everyone for themselves. Now, we've been talking about how there are some rules that we really hate to follow, but at the same time, some rules are necessary. The people in your favorite zombie movie or story, you know, they might technically be, you know, free of the laws and rules they used to live by. But that kind of life, I wouldn't really say that's exactly freedom. Not when everyone is against each other and only looking out for themselves. Okay, so maybe, you know, you wouldn't want to live in a world where there are no rules. But what's a better option? Hmm. I think I know. Maybe a world where you're in charge and you get to make the rules. So I wanna ask you a question. If you were king or queen for a day, what would you do? Which rules would you wanna make or break right away? Go ahead, share with your group, and we'll be right back. Man, being in charge sounds pretty fun, right? You could uh, fill your calendar with things that you like to do and skip the things that you don't. You can cancel the classes at school you don't like or just cancel school altogether. You could pass laws that make your life more fun, happy, and convenient. You know, there's an old movie called Click where Adam Sandler somehow got his hands on a remote control that controlled his whole life. Click. Plants a cat? Yeah, but your kid stinks. Ah. ah! <laughs> A regular Derek Jeter right there. Maybe it seems like it would be awesome to have this kind of power. But as you can probably imagine, this kind of power can lead to some problems. I mean, what if you weren't the person in control? Right? What if someone else had the power? They'd want to do whatever they wanted, and their wants would probably be different from yours. Or what if there were more than one remote? <laughs> right? you, might, you might want to cancel math class and only study history, while they might want all-day gym. You'd make a law telling everyone to pay you a dollar a day for being awesome, but they'd want that dollar to go to them instead. Where would it stop? We all want freedom to do our own thing, but if everyone wants different things, how do we decide who gets what they want? Now, I'm gonna talk to you about a time in my life when I was in charge. You see, I, I, used, to be a, I used to be a coach. I used to coach uh, grade nine and 10 boys basketball, you know, Aiden Bowman, Walter Murray, Holy Cross, those kinds of kids. And this was around the time a few years ago where dabbing really became this, this huge thing. And it really frustrated me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of dabbing, but what my players used to do because they knew I didn't like it is they would come into practice every night and they would just constantly just like, just give her. And it used to frustrate me. So what I would do is I put a law in place. I put a rule in place that said, during practice hours from 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., you cannot dab. We're here to practice. That's what we're gonna do. You can dab on your own time. So sure enough, at the stroke of 7 p.m., there'd be no dabbing. Otherwise, if you did, you and the entire team would run five shuttles for each dab that you did. 
I know it seemed a little harsh, but that's how much I hated it. Now, what they would do after practice was over, right at 10.30, 10.31, just to spite me, a lot of the students in that gym would just go like, they just go hard at it, you know? I hated it. But that was not an easy balance to strike. <laughs> it, it, it's the balance between what we want and what others want. Sometimes we're not sure how to compromise. And most of the time, we don't even want to. Like me, I didn't wanna compromise when it came to dabbing. We're just not gonna do it. And most of the time, we wanna make decisions that benefit us. Now for the last, you know, last week we talked about uh, the most important rule that God ever gave us. And although some people think that God needs us to obey this long list of rules, Jesus said that there's one law that matters the most. And it's the law of love. So you see, according to Jesus, following God comes down to this, love God and love others as you love yourself. The greatest commandment sounds simple, but it's not so easy to do. Now, if you've been here over the last week and this week, you know, you're going to know a little bit about our friend James. He was the brother of Jesus and he was a leader of the Jerusalem church during the early years of the Jesus movement. And during that time, he wrote a letter to the early followers of Jesus that you can now find in the book known as the book of James. And in this letter, James was trying to help these uh, Jesus followers learn how to obey God's law, the law of love. You see, James, he wasn't a, he wasn't a king, but he was still a powerful person. He was still a person of influence. So when a dispute arose among a bunch of churches from different regions, they looked for James to, the, to judge the dispute and make a ruling on who was right and, well, who was wrong. So I'm just going to briefly summarize the dispute that happened in Acts 15. You see, most of the first followers of Jesus were Jewish people who believed that Jesus was a savior that God had promised. But not everyone who followed Jesus was from a Jewish background. You see, some of these early Jesus followers believed that everyone, everyone needed to convert to Judaism in order to follow Jesus. And conversion, guys, it wasn't an easy process. And other Jesus followers believed the only thing anyone needed to do uh, was to follow Jesus and to trust and commit to following him. James listened carefully to all of the perspectives and he made a decision. And his decision was that, look, no one should be forced to go through lots of difficult steps in order to follow Jesus. That's what we're about here at Circle 2. Now, did that decision make James uncomfortable? Probably. Would it have been easier for James to tell everyone they had become Jewish before, uh, they had to become Jewish before they became Christians? I think so. You know, James grew up Jewish and he followed Jewish laws. So it would have been so comfortable for him to tell others to do what he had done. But here's the thing, James took a more difficult path. James understood that his decision wouldn't impact God's love for him. He was free to do whatever he wanted to do. But James was also committed to following Jesus's law of love. And he knew the most loving thing that he could do was to make it easy for others to know Jesus. James decided that his comfort was not as important as loving others. Now, you could say we have the freedom to treat people however we'd like, but when we live in a way that prioritizes our wants and comforts at the expense of others, I would argue that we're not really free. That's why Jesus told us the most important thing that we can do besides loving God isn't just to love ourselves, but to love others like we love ourselves. And it's why the book of James tells us to show mercy to others instead of being judgmental towards them. Because we'll, we'll, we'll never live freely as long as we're, the, we're, as long as we're only living for ourselves. There's one thing that we will someday answer for, and it's this. It's how do we love God and love others? We could make decisions that benefit only ourselves, but here's the thing, free people make decisions that benefit others. Now let's think back to the decision that James had to make. If you were an early follower of Jesus, how do you think that you would have responded? Would you have wanted all of 
the new Jesus followers to go through all of the same steps that you went through to become Jewish? Do you think you would have been okay with putting your comfort, your traditions, and your experiences aside for the sake of others? You know, what would you do if you disagreed with the people making the final decision? You know, James, he, uh, he ultimately made a decision that prioritized others over himself. And I, man, I am so glad that he did that. Because if James had chosen differently, here's the thing, if James had chosen differently, you and I might never have had the opportunity to follow Jesus. James knew difficult decisions rarely have a clear, you know, yes or no, a clear right or wrong answer, especially when you're in a decision-making position like James was. So when we're faced with a difficult decision, maybe we shouldn't think in terms of what's right and wrong. Maybe it's more helpful to think like this. What's best for me? And what's best for others? I wanna briefly tell you about how we can make decisions that benefit others. You know, someday in the future, there will be a time, there will be a day when you are in charge. Yes, you. You are the future of our society and our world, and you are the future of our church. You might be in charge of a group project. You might become captain of your team. You might become someone's boss. You might mentor someone younger than you. You might become a parent. You might become a pastor. Throughout your life, you'll have plenty of chances to be in charge, to make the rules and to make big decisions. Now that's a lot of authority for one person. So when you're in charge, what should you do with all of that power? You will be tempted to use it for your own gain. Trust me, you will. I've been there, but don't. Using your authority for your own gain might be, it might be nice for just a moment, but it won't be satisfying in the long run. Instead, follow James's lead. Be wise, be merciful, and be led by love. Use your power to benefit others, not just yourself. If you aren't prioritizing others over yourself right now, gaining more power or more influence will not make you suddenly care about others more than yourself. That journey starts right now. So how can you leverage the influence and power that you already have to benefit others. We are all leaders. We are all leaders. In what ways do you already have influence? Are you influential in your friend group, on social media, on your team, or with a younger family member? What kinds of decisions do you have the power to influence at home, at school, or at church, in your group of friends, or in the world? How will you manage the influence and power that you already have because you've got it? Will you use it to benefit yourself or will you use it to benefit others? And here's the thing, thanks to Jesus, we have freedom, but we'll never live freely as long as we're only living for ourselves because free people make decisions that benefit others. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>